Good morning. And now, if you like to stand, I know we can't sing, but we can still praise the Lord. We can still lift our arms. And if you're able to stand, please stand. But if not, please stay seated. For everyone. We're allowed to sing, we're not allowed to sing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Amazing Grace. Ah! 
set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns unending love. Amazing Gary, please sit. Thank you. And all my excitement about doing the wedding band, I forgot the notices. So I don't know if anyone has got your green pamphlets, but we are looking for people for the tech team, if there's any techie people here. And also, um, there's a dementia friendly coffee morning at St. Mary at Latin on a Friday. And Starfishes is now closed for the summer holidays. And the parish office, our lovely Natasha, is going on holiday. So uh, um, that will be closed as from Monday the 26th of July and come back on the 2nd of August. And I know tomorrow uh, people are saying tomorrow is Freedom Day. Just please bear with St Mary's because um, change is not going to happen overnight and we've got to think of everyone and see what's going on. So if you can just bear with us and, uh, and we'll do everything that's right for everybody. So that's lovely. Thank you. Right. Now we come to a time of confession. <clears throat> Heavenly God, you gifted this world and made us stewards of it, gave us family from many lands and asked us to care for them. Put your word upon our hearts and ask that we share it. But we have only thought of ourselves and the blessings of our lives, forgetting that your grace and the love are for the benefit of all. Forgive our selfishness and enlarge our vision and enable us to be the people we could be, faithful servants of you, our heavenly King. And may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins 
and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I know we've just been standing, but if we'd like to stand once more as we have another song. Thank you. And only if you're able to. I will up my life, yeah? That was quick, I only just sat down. <laughs> Let's all sing together. Oh, we can't sing together. I will offer up my life. I will offer up my life in spirit and truth, pouring out the olive of love. As my worship to you In surrender I must give My every part Lord receive the sacrifice Of a broken heart Jesus what can I give What can I bring To so faithful a friend To so loving a king Savior what can be saved What can be sung Till, not even in part of the dead of love that is owed by this thankful heart. You deserve my every breath, for you paid the great cost. Giving up your life to death, even death on the cross. You took all my shame away and defeated my sin. Opened up the gates of heaven and beckoned me in. Jesus, what can I give? What can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so loving a king? Savior, what can be saved? Gary, thank you. Please sit. And yes, it's lovely, isn't it? Because our hearts, that's what God loves about us and Jesus. He gave his only son for us and our hearts. If we open our hearts to him and the love that he gives us that we can give back to him, it's just absolutely fantastic. I'm so humble to think that our Lord loves us and is just amazing and all where we fail. He still loves us. So long as we strive in his name to do the best that we possibly can and get better and better at it. Amen. Um, now, Sue, if you'd like to come up, please. Thank you. I'll get the Bible for you. That's really heavy. 
So the gospel reading this morning is taken from Luke chapter 2, verse 41 to 52. The boy Jesus at the temple. Every year, his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to the custom. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them lots of questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favour with God and men. This is the word of the Lord. Well, good morning, everyone. It's lovely to see you. Uh, lovely to see you by imagination, those on Zoom as well. So uh, let's, do you want to, everyone turn around, shall we, and just give them a wave. Say, <laughs> that's good. We're all together as one family here, aren't we? Great. Thank you very much. Um, I'm here because, uh, sadly, of course, Sarah's had to go back to the Isle of Man to be with her family for our mother's funeral. So uh, that's why I've stepped in. But I'm going to do what she asked. I'm, I'm a man under authority. Uh, and we're looking at the, the subject of study today. Remember, we're going through these different disciplines over the, 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 the months of, the mo of this year. And uh, so this, this month, it's study. And, and we, we really mean Bible study. It's about why, we, why should we spend so much time looking at this book? I, I'm gonna, I won't pick up the lectern. I won't pick up the lectern Bible. It's <laughs> rather heavy, isn't it? Why do we spend so much time looking at this book? Um, what's the purpose of our Bible study? I want us to get really dug into that if we can. Okay, now I, I believe there's two really important reasons why we do Bible study. And the first and the most important really is that it's about knowing God. Remember what the greatest commandment was, what the greatest commandment is, sorry, not was, is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, and your mind. And the second commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. But we have to go for the first one first. And in order to love God, we need to know him. Now, I think some marriages fail, don't they? Because people don't actually get to know each other well enough before they get married. And they have the wrong impression. They, they make up ideas about each other that are actually not correct. In, in, to be in love with someone, to be really in love with someone, you have to know them. You have to get dug into them, if you like. And that's what the first purpose of the Bible is. It's to help us to actually know God and what he's like. And as Jesus said, his main purpose to come to earth was to reveal the nature of God. As we look at Jesus, we see what God is like. 
Jesus reveals to us the nature of God in a way that we can all relate to as a human being. And of course, he's described in this book in wonderful detail. And particularly in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, um, Matthew and uh, John were uh, part, numbered amongst the 12. Mark, we know actually is writing down what Peter told him. And of course, Mark did know Jesus as well. Luke came along a little bit later, but he does actually tell us how he got his information. At the beginning of Luke's gospel, it says, um, these things were handed down to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. So Luke actually is recording what was told to him by those first witnesses, those people that knew Jesus. And of course, we get the strong impression from Luke's gospel that Luke actually spoke to Mary, the mother of Jesus. That he, In Luke's gospel, we're getting her perspective, uh, but the perspective of other people who knew Jesus directly. So by reading the Bible, and by reading those who knew him directly, and those who came along later, like Paul, who had a wonderful direct experience of the, of the Lord Jesus, by reading them, we get this wonderful knowledge and understanding of who Jesus is and therefore who God is. So that's a really good reason, isn't it? <laughs> we can obey the first commandment to know the Lord, our, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, our soul, our strength and our mind and to love our neighbor as ourselves by using this, this resource that God has given us. Because we believe that God really inspired the writers of the Holy inspired the writers of the Bible through the Holy Spirit to record those things that we were going to need down through the centuries. And that's been the experience of the church through those centuries, hasn't it? As people have come again and again to read these accounts and to say, yes, that does reveal the nature of God and does allow us to get to know him and to love him. But there is a second reason, and I think it's almost as, as important and we find it kind of evidenced, if you like, on the, um, on the day of Pentecost. You know what happened on the day of Pentecost, that uh, the disciples, this is after Jesus died and rose again and went back to heaven. They would gather together in Jerusalem on, on that morning, nine o'clock in the morning it tells us. And all of a sudden, God started to manifest his presence with them by the tongues of fire coming down, by them hearing this rushing wind, and by them being inspired to go out into the streets and to speak to people, to tell them the wonders of God, as it says, in all the different languages of the people who were gathered there. God actually made his presence very clear to them. And that the great thing that happened then is through Peter, let me read what it says in Acts chapter 2. It says, Peter, standing there with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let, let it be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. Though this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it, in the, in the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Now those words that I wrote the, read the end there are not Peter's words. They come from the Bible, from the prophet Joel, written hundreds of years before. But Peter knew his Bible well enough that when God did something, he knew where to go in this great long book to understand what God was doing. And this is the second major reason for, re for doing Bible study. It's so that when God does something in the here and now, we can understand it by connecting together by, by what he's already revealed. God never con contradicts himself. If God is genuinely doing something now, we should be able to find it referred to here in these, in these pages. But in order to be able to find the right passage, we, that's where we need to do the study. We need to get stuck into this. 
in order that when God does something, we can go straight, straight to it. I mean, it's very unlikely Peter actually had a scroll there that he, that he opened up and started to read from. He's actually quoting from memory there, isn't he? But we still have, we have all the tools. I mean, it's wonderful to have computers now, to have Bible on computer, that you can search for things very quickly and find them. And we should use all the tools that we have. But we need to have that fundamental, deep understanding of what, what's in this book in order to be able to, to do what Peter did. In the authorized version, it actually says, Peter said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is that. I love that phrase, this is that. He's saying, what God is doing now, I can find here. And by putting those two together, what God is doing and what we read there, we can understand what we need to do. And that's how I believe God really wants to guide us. The, 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 the day of Pentecost was the birthday of the church. It was when the church came into being as the Holy Spirit was poured out on the folks. And that's the, the, the way that God wants to lead his church through, through what he's doing now, but also what's been written down for, our, for us over the centuries. This is that. Now, we believe that God continues to do stuff, and we believe that God continues to speak to us. And this is, again, where it helps us to, to have that fundamental understanding that what's in here is going to really help us. Now, I was thinking as I was praying through about leading today, and Sarah didn't give me a lot of time, but uh, something really came to mind, an example of what happened to us when we were in Shrewsbury. You know, I was vicar in Shrewsbury for 15 years. And uh, there's a particular incident that happened, and I even know the date, it was on the, oh, I lost it now, on the, I think it was the, it was in December of, two, two, oh, yeah, 17th of December, 2009, 17th of December. We had a young lady who was, uh, we employed in the church to be our worship leader, a bit like Gary, and he, uh, she, she, but she did also do some administration, so she was a kind of combination of, of uh, Gary and Natasha. <laughs> Uh, uh, and she had an office in the church, and, and one this, on, this, on this morning, I went in to see her, and we sat in her office, and God gave me a word. He spoke to me very clearly. He gave me a new kind of motto for the church, uh, and the motto was to be living together in the presence of God, living together in the presence of God. So we used that as our kind of, um, uh, I don't know, a catchphrase, or what do you call it? Um, chat <laughs> It, it was our um, a slap, was it strap line? That's the word, isn't it? Strap line, yeah. But he gave me that instant, and in the, exactly the same instant, he gave Laura this vision, and I got her to write it down. Uh, and I, let me read it out to you what she wrote. She said, I saw lots of people on top of a mountain. I could, I could see their eyes looking up to heaven and their hands raised. As they did this, I saw God give each one a loaf of bread. Each loaf was different, shape and size, as it represented the different ways in which God speaks to his people. Each person would take their loaf and break it and share it with one another. The bread they were given, the bread they were given and were sharing was always fresh. We need to feed each other with what God has given us. It needs to come straight from God as it is real food and is what we and others need. We need to live and depend on fresh revelation. Okay, now it's quite a short thing, isn't it? Not a great uh, think, um, sort of complicated thing. Simply going up onto a mountain, reaching up and receiving bread from heaven, and breaking it apart and sharing it with each other. And that was the vision that God gave her. Now my job was to actually try and connect that with scripture. And as I started to, I realized that this, what she had seen, was connected all over the place in both the Old and the New Testament. Let me just read to you some of the passages. Genesis 22, Exodus 16, Leviticus 24, Isaiah 55, Nehemiah chapter 9, Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 12, 
Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 22, Luke chapter 24, John chapter 6, a big chunk in John chapter 6, uh, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, I, I, I mean, not, it's not time to go through all of those at the moment, but you could see uh, uh, immediately, once we started to do that, we could see that the, what the vision that Laura had given her, her, had given her really was something we should take a notice of, that this really was from God, that there really was a connection, just in the way Peter had connected what happened on the day of Pentecost with what Joel had said. We could connect what God had said to Laura or revealed to Laura uh, for us in all those different passages. Let me just take one example is the road to Emmaus. If you think about the road to Emmaus, remember what happened there. Jesus walked, came alongside these two men uh, as they walked from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And they were really fed up and sad because they'd seen Jesus die on the cross. And they hadn't realized that he'd, he'd risen from the dead. So he, they didn't know it was him to start with. But he opened up the scriptures to them to show how it, what had happened to Jesus really was all in here. And they got to Emmaus, remember, and they sat around the table. And then Jesus broke the bread. And it was at that point that they recognized who he was, that the revelation that everything that he said to them, what really, really was true, came together. So you see how Laura's vision connected with that, that passage in, in the Bible. And then all the other passages, you know, the bread from heaven, the manna from heaven, the, um, what's called the show bread, which was used in the temple, all these different ways helped us to realize that that vision that Laura was given was something we needed to take seriously and we needed to dig into and to understand and for it to have a real impact in the way we actually lived as a church. Now, I think a very important thing for us to realize is that God could trust Peter. Now, as you read through the Gospels, you realize that Peter was a bit of an impetuous person, isn't he? I remember my sister was saying he was about a friend of hers. She only, what she said, she only uh, opened her mouth to change feet. <laughs> Peter sometimes said things before thinking about them. Um, so there were some characteristics to Peter that perhaps you would say is not a very good characteristic to be the leader of the church. But Jesus knew him, and he, she knew, he knew him well, and he knew Jesus knew that Peter knew the scriptures. So Peter could be trusted to receive the revelation that came on the day of Pentecost about God pouring his spirit out on all people. And he, God could trust Peter to actually stand up and speak on that day in, in, in Jerusalem. And in many ways, I believe that we need to carry on with our Bible study so that God knows that he can trust us, that we've got enough of this in our head and in our mind, in our spirits, that when he does stuff or when he speaks to us in a powerful way, we've got something to refer to. We've got something to build our interpretation of what he's saying to us. And that's why it is so important that we continue to do our studies, both individually and corporately. One of the great values we all know as we um, come together in a house group or a fellowship group is we sit down and look at the Bible together, don't we? What we're doing is somewhat like the, the, the boy Jesus did in Jerusalem. He went and talked to people who, who'd spent their lives studying the scriptures. And he was learning about himself and about God and about all that God was going to need to do through him by doing those studies. But we're also demonstrating to God that we can be trusted for him to reveal new things to us. We can be trusted to step out in faith to do his will when he needs us to do that. Peter was someone who Jesus knew could receive revelation and he knew he was someone who could actually check it out with what's in the Bible. So can I encourage you to carry on, carry on digging into this book, carry on both individually and corporately one of the reasons I think we do, we do this each Sunday here in church, don't we, is we dig into the Bible. 
And it, hopefully it's helping all of us um, to actually get a, a deeper understanding of the nature of God, but also helping us so that when God does move, we can actually respond in the correct way. Now, obviously, there's all sorts of ways you can go on this. Um, one of the things that, again, from Laura's vision was very clear is that there's something about communion in that, the breaking of the bread and the sharing. Remember on the, day, on the road to Emmaus, it says Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave it to them. That, that action of breaking bread and sharing it with each other. From Laura's vision, we can see clearly what that's about. What it's a large part of what that's about is about sharing the revelations that God gives us, the fresh revelation. One thing about bread, and perhaps it's a problem using wafers, is that the bread goes off, doesn't it? It needs to be fresh. So when we come up for communion, I'd like you to think about this carefully. I'm hoping and praying that what I've been saying has gone into you to the point where you realize that when you come to receive bread, when, you come, when we share bread together, what we're, doing to, what we're doing is we're saying, yes, Lord, I want to receive the revelation that you have for me. Communion really is an acted out prayer. It's a way of us coming to, to the Lord, coming to his table and saying, Lord, feed us with your word. Remember what Jesus said to the devil, he quoted it from the book of Deuteronomy. He said, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. He there acknowledging that this is what bread means for us. It means being willing to receive the words coming out of God's mouth. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And remember too, in the, day, in, the, um, in, in the Lord's Prayer, we pray, give us our daily bread, don't we? Give us today, I'm sorry, I've misquoted it. Give us today our daily bread. The, the business about daily is actually there twice. It's emphatically saying we need to be continually fed with fresh revelation. Now, I know that the Lord's Prayer is also speaking about our physical needs as well, but I think it's also there very clearly speaking about our need to hear and to receive and to act on the word of God, the fresh revelation. So God can trust us, I believe, because we're willing to take this book seriously, because we're willing to let it be part of our lives. We're willing to let the words that are written in here seep into us, so that when God does do something in the here and now, we can connect with this and say, yes, like Peter, this is that. And as we come up to receive communion, I really would like you to, to focus on that and say, yes, Lord, as I receive this bread, I do that as a way of saying to you, Lord, I am willing to receive what you want to give me, your fresh revelation. And when I receive it, Lord, I will go to the Bible to connect what you're telling me now with what has been revealed down through the centuries. And then I will act on it. And I believe as we come forward to communion, corporately, we are actually saying that to God. Does that make sense? So just hang on to that thought. And, then, and for those of you at home too, as we share bread, as you, as you eat the bread, I don't physically need to, to do anything. It's much, this is about faith. It's about us being willing to receive what God is revealing to us. So let me just pray, and then uh, we're going to continue with our prayers then. Lord, I thank you that that we do not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from your mouth. We live not by what we put into our mouths, but what comes out of your mouth. So Lord, we pray that you feed us today 
with your revelation and help us to use the knowledge that we've built up over the years by studying the Bible. Help us to know how we can put these things together and follow in Peter's footsteps to know that this is that. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we take up an attitude of prayer, may we still our hearts and our minds. And for those who can, we just look at the altar, the table of our Lord behind me, and above the altar, the beauty of the stained glass window and the sun's light shining through, highlighting the image of Jesus, his arms open, welcoming all of us into his presence. May we feel his presence with us and in us as we lift our prayer. Lord, as you welcome us into your presence, we know that it is by your grace that you are making us faithful, by your grace that we come to your table. This is how we know what love is. Just one look at your cross. This is how we see how love works. For you surrendered your all. You so loved the world that you gave your only son that we might live. A love so amazing, a love so divine. You loved us first and we love you in return. May our love be loud. May our love be strong. May our love be hearts, minds, hands and feet that reach out to all in need. To serve you as you call so that you will be worshipped, glorified, and adored. As we lift our prayers, we ask in your mercy that our lives bear fruit to the glory of your name. We think of our church family here and on Zoom, and those not with us today. Together we are God's house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets and the cornerstone in Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, we are all being made part of his, this dwelling, where God lives by his spirit. O God, move among your people and give us a deep sense of our calling as your family, your community, your church, your dwelling place. Give us a true sense of being a part of your kingdom at work in this world. Fill us and form us through the work of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, graciously hear us. We think of our community, of this parish of Harlow and the communities in which we uh, mix, work, wherever we are. Merciful God, we give thanks that you choose to bring unity and people to peace through the gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Where there is prejudice and hostility in our communities, we pray you replace them with peace and reconciliation. We pray that in people's hearts, through the power of your Holy Spirit, you flood our communities with your call and command to love as you love us, to love neighbour as self. We pray where there is breakdown in relationship, you bring forgiveness and hearts of reconciliation. We hear the great message of Jesus reconciling people to God and to one another. And yet we still hes hesitate to reach out to people when they are different in some way from us. Fill our hearts with love and courage to reach out to all those in need. We pray for those in our community those who have lost income, for those who live in fear in their homes, for those who have no homes, for those who are offering extraordinary kindness, and for those who are anxious ahead of the release of lockdown. Lord, you are in the midst of us. Help us all in these times of trouble. Lord, 
graciously hear us. We think of the nations and the world in these dark and difficult days when COVID restrictions are to be lifted in this country and in other places in the world. We turn our hearts to you as we see the number of those affected by COVID rising rapidly. In ages past, you have delivered our nation. Do it again, we pray. Give wisdom beyond human wisdom to our leaders. Give strength beyond human strength to the NHS and all our frontline workers. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick. And your wisdom to those who are still searching for different ways of treating uh, COVID and other illness. Strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work, many will be restored to health and, and protected. We pray that there will not be too much pressure placed on health services, so that those suffering with so many other diseases may be served. God of love and hope, you made the world and care for all creation. The news is full of stories about coronavirus. Some people are worried that they might get ill. Others are anxious for their families and friends. Be with them and help them to find peace. We also lift those in countries such as South Africa where there is internal violence and strife. We think of all the nations across Africa and South America where there is conflict. We think of climate change and those who have lost loved ones due to catastrophic floods in Germany, Belgium and Holland. We thank you that even in these anxious times, you are with us. Help us to put our trust in you and keep us safe. Have mercy upon us. Heal our land and our world, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. We turn to think of the sick and the bereaved. We gather as your people, seeking your comfort and your love. May we lift our hearts, thinking of those dear to us, those we know, those who we don't know, those who are sick, those who are bereaved. Almighty God, we invoke you, the fountain of everlasting light, and entreat you to send forth your truth into our hearts. You command the light to shine out in the darkness. We pray now, Lord, that you light and healing spirit will pour down on those who are sick and in need. Your love is as wide as the ocean, as deep as the sea. May your spirit rise like a mighty wave and come and restore those who are ill. You are the water of life. You are a fresh spring. You are a healing rain. O Holy Spirit, come like a dove. Cover those who are wounded by sickness or loss with your grace and your love. Shield them from sorrow. Tend them with your goodness. Heal, Lord, their sickness with your loving care. May they lay down their burdens. May you strength, your strength be made perfect in their weakness, we pray. Carry them until they see your rainbow of promise, your love, peace, and joy in thee. Lord, graciously hear us. And as we bring our prayers to a close, Heavenly Father, thank you that Christ is building his church, stone by living stone, into a holy temple of God, and that we are part of his work and have the promise of the Holy Spirit of God as our help and our guide. Thank you that you started good work in us, and we pray that you will continue to fashion, form, and transform us into the likeness of Christ with every passing day. Give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to uphold you, a heart to meditate on you, a life to proclaim you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, I pray. And as the Father taught us, so now we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jane, for that uh, lovely prayers. We're now going to share uh, just the bread uh, according to the regulations. Um, so we're going to, um, uh, and hopefully those of you at home have got some bread that you can, um, you can break and share together at home. Just remind you that as we come to receive the bread, we are actually asking our Heavenly Father to speak to us to give us his word, to feed us with his revelation. And that uh, as Jesus, Jesus of course is the word, and he said, this is my body. And I'll read the words actually from uh, 1 Corinthians where Peter, sorry, where Paul uh, tells us what actually happened at the Last Supper. And, and Paul writes, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Do you want to put the words that, uh, from the service up on the screen? If you repeat the words in bold type. Servant Christ, help us to follow you into the upper room, to share your meal of bread and cup, to accept our common place in your one body, broken to create a new humanity. Servant Christ, help us to follow you. Be present, O Jesus, our good high priest, as you were with the disciples and make yourself known to us as we take bread and drink wine in remembrance of your sacrifice for us. Holy Lord, help us to receive you. May we all meet as guests at the eternal meal in the kingdom of your Father, and there glorify, adore, and praise you, together with the Father and the life-creating Spirit for all eternity. Loving King, help us to serve you and we take and eat of the bread. Is that right? Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you. You inspired Jesus to give us what we can do together to remember his death and resurrection and to cry out to you, Lord, that he may live in us and that we may hear his voice we pray this in his name. Amen. Amen. Are we going to sing? Yeah. Let's worship God and give thanks and praise him. <clears throat>
Take me as you find me All my fears and failures Feel my life again I give my life to follow Everything I believe in Now I My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Of the rock salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Save. He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for these gifts given and those given in other ways. May they open your kingdom to more people. May they bring hope and joy to those that don't see it. Lord, let these gifts be a way in for them and guide them to your door, Lord, as you open the door for me and everyone else that's here and our church family at home. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now we come to our blessing. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you, wherever he sends you, as he guides you through the wilderness, protects you through the storms, and brings you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. The Lord bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you all so much. The tech team for Richard, for Gary, for prayers, for readings. Lord, just a wonderful day to celebrate you, to worship you and to be with you in your house. Everyone go out, enjoy and spread the word where you were today. You were in his house and we share the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.